Travel is an amazing way to experience new places. Wellness is being physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy. The Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel Podcast is all about exploring travel and wellness. I'm Barbara Tuckett, your host and the owner of Sweet Dreams Travel. Part of our emotional and mental health is connection, and I believe that traveling with the intention to connect can bring wellness to your life. In this podcast, I explore traveling for connection, connecting with places and experiences, connecting especially with people, the people you're traveling with, the people you meet, and especially connecting with yourself. I want your travel to improve your wellness. Hey, you guys, are you feeling like summer yet? I'm kind of starting to feel like summer. It's warming up getting nice and sunny, the days are getting longer, and today's topic is also a very summery kind of topic, I feel like. As summer comes upon us, we start to think about family vacations and where we're going to travel together with our families, right? And I know I've been talking a lot about traveling with kids and things like that, but today we are going to talk about traveling with your grandkids. I myself am not a grandma yet. One of these days I'll get there, but I have a lot of friends and a lot of obviously neighbors and people I know that are grandparents and are starting to travel with their grandkids. Of course, I also have my own parents and my own kids that, you know, of course my parents could be the grandkids in this scenario. So I think traveling as grandkids and grandparents and parents as multi-generational kind of trips is a really fun, amazing topic. And that's what we are going to talk about today. I'm going to give you 10 amazing, spectacular destinations to travel with the grandkids. So this kind of travel, when you travel with the kids and the grandkids and the parents is such a win-win. It's a win-win for everybody. And we're going to talk about that as we go along. Let's jump in and talk about some of these destinations. All of them help create connections and memories as a family. You know, I am all about creating connections while we travel and connecting with our the places we go and especially making memories and connections with the people that we are with and with ourselves to really have some good wellness type of experiences to hang on to. And some of those are connecting and making memories. So of these 10 great options that I'm going to give you, some of them are overseas. Some of them require a lot more planning. Some of them require less planning. Some require passports. Some don't. It's just a really good variety. And of course, it's not like I could give you, you know, a list of a hundred places to go with your grandkids because there's so many, but these are just some really, really good ones. Some fun ideas. Let's jump in. Number one idea is London, England. London is full of like rich history and amazing iconic landmarks. You can do things like watch the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. If you are a Harry Potter fan, London would be a great place to go. They have the Warner Brothers studio tour and you can, they have the great hall that you can explore that got Diagon Alley. And you can even fly on a broomstick. So don't think that if you're a Harry Potter fan that Universal Studios is the only place you can go. You seriously can go to London and get a really good, immersive, fun experience at the Warner Brothers Studio. Okay. For those of you who may or may not be Harry Potter fans, some other ideas are you can visit the British Museum, which of course has artifacts from all around the world. They have the Rosetta Stone, the original Rosetta Stone there which is kind of a fun fact. There are also some cool other museums like a science museum and a natural history museum, super kid friendly and very interactive. There's really some fun besides just the landmarks that you know of and would want to see or visit in landmark in London. There are some really fun things to do. Take a double decker bus ride, try an afternoon tea, like just try all the fun things that are local to London. And that would be a super fun trip. When I think about like going on a trip to Europe or one that's a little more involved like this with kids and grandkids, of course, it depends on the ages of the kids. But a lot of times 
less is more. As an adult, you might want to pack a whole bunch of things into your trip. Oh, if you're going to London, then maybe you should go to Scotland and maybe you should go to Ireland and maybe you should go to Paris and maybe anyway, as adults, I know we think this way that like we want to just go see all the things. But if you're traveling with kids, I think less is more. Sometimes it's better to stay in just one location, for example, London, and do a bunch of really fun things and amazing things in this location. Take it a little bit slower paced so that you can enjoy the time with the kids and not try to cram in everything under the sun. Okay, number two is a Disney cruise. Now I know I have talked quite a bit recently about a Disney cruise because I did a whole episode on a recent Disney cruise that my daughters went on and talked to them all about that. But a Disney cruise really is like a fun, unique adventure on the high seas with your family. All ages are catered to on a Disney cruise. They do Caribbean itineraries. They do Alaska itineraries. A lot of people didn't know that Disney cruises go to Alaska. They do. They have this amazing world-class entertainment, character meet and greets, which is fun for the kids and adults, possibly. They've got water slides, Broadway style shows. They have these fun deck parties. And it's really a fun way for grandparents to just kind of relax and unwind. And the kids get to enjoy all of these entertainment options that are on board. And the grandparents can enjoy their entertainment options as well. So it's just a Disney cruise is a really fun option. So don't forget about that. Okay. Number three is a specific type of resort. They're called the beaches resorts. And beaches resorts are operated by the Sandals property owner. It's the, it's the same company. And the Sandals properties are, of course, made for all-inclusives for adults. But the beaches resorts are all-inclusives for the kids and families. And they are amazing. They're incredible. Super duper all-inclusive, like you don't have to pay for anything extra. They're, everything's all included. The beaches resorts are in the Caribbean. There are several in Jamaica. And then also there's an amazing property in Turks and Caicos. So they are super great. Um, they've got these incredible water parks. They've got great kids clubs, like uh, amazing, including for babies. Like so many all-inclusive resorts will start at four years old and up because that's an easier age to cater to. But the beaches resorts, they have stuff for even these little tiny babies. So it's a super great place for like a multi-generational type of trip because they cater, they literally cater to all ages. They have Xbox game garages, which are like little Xbox play lounges and things like that. They have Sesame Street characters at the beaches resorts and have some really fun interactive things with them. And another really cool thing about the beaches resorts is they cater to autistic children and they have all of these great programs and they have the, the kids club, I guess, runner people that run the kids club <laughs> runners, <laughs> directors, and people who work at the kids clubs, they are completely trained in how to connect with and how to work with autistic kids. And that is like an amazing thing as well, because sometimes over overstimulation can be a big problem if you have somebody that is on the spectrum. Beaches resorts are fantastic. I love them. And as you can see, I have been to beat some beaches resorts. You can see here's a picture of me with Bert and Ernie. And these are actually all three of these pictures that I'm showing are ones that I took from a beaches resort. Okay. Number four, this one is one of those places that is a little closer to home that I was promising you that there would be on this list it is San Diego, California. No passports are required. It's closer to home. So it might feel a little more comfortable if you are kind of a newbie to planning a multi-generational trip. They have a perfect climate. They have beautiful beaches and there's all kinds of things to do in the area. You can go to the San Diego Zoo. The San Diego Zoo is one of the only zoos in the country that has pandas. So that's pretty fun. They've got elephants. Of course, they've got flamingos, like this beautiful picture of a flamingo that I'm showing here comes from the zoo. This picture comes from the zoo. So many fun animals. 
They've got a place in San Diego called Balboa Park, which is really great. It's got museums, they've got gardens, they've even got this vintage carousel that you can ride. It's pretty fun. Legoland is located in San Diego. <coughs> and of course, Legoland maybe caters a little more to little kids rather than big kids, but they do have rides, they've got shows, and just amazing Lego creations. And I would say that Legos are not just for little kids. A lot of adults and big kids get into Legos as well. Coronado Beach is famous for their sandcastle building. And so that's fun. There are certain times of year when they have sandcastle contests and things, which is incredible. I have been in San Diego and looked at some of the sandcastles that people make. They are so unbelievably detailed and just amazing. And they've got the USS Midway that is right there. It's, you know, this big uh, battleship, I guess that's the description of it, but it's a museum and you can go right on board and go through the museum. So it's really cool. Anyway, tons of fun things to do in San Diego. You don't even have to go up North and do the whole theme park thing or anything like that. Go to Disneyland or deal with any of that craziness. You can stay right in San Diego and there's lots of fun activities. Okay, number five, this one's a fun one, an Alaska cruise. Well, they're all really fun ones, so I don't know how I just say this is a fun one. I think a lot of people think, oh, an Alaska cruise, that's just one for the adults. The kids wouldn't like that. Why would, why would I take kids on an Alaska cruise? They would rather do something with sun and sand and things like that, which may be true, but what is not to love about an Alaskan cruise? I mean, seriously, the glaciers, these fun little charming towns along the coast, the looking for wildlife. I mean, like, it's so amazing. You get to sail through these icy fjords. It's not freezing cold because Alaska cruises only operate th from May through September. You're never going to be there in the middle of the winter. The kids will love getting their own set of binoculars and looking for whales or watching for sea otters, looking for black bears, looking for eagles, like so much fun wildlife to spot the whole time that you are on an Alaska cruise. There is Glacier Bay National Park, which has these incredible glaciers and ice formations that you get to sail through. There's really fun excursions on Alaska cruise. There's dog sledding sea kayaking, scenic train rides, like there's some really great things that you can totally do with kids and can make it really fun. Number six is Costa Rica. Now, Costa Rica is a great destination. It blends adventure and natural beauty. There are these amazing lush rainforests that have lots of wildlife, monkeys, birds, sloths, of course, you know, the toucan is in, located in Costa Rica. There's just so much great wildlife. They have natural hot springs with these beautiful landscapes all around them. There are wildlife sanctuaries that you can visit. You can go on so many hikes, like to hidden waterfalls and things like that. But Costa Rica is not just all about jungles and volcanoes, although there are jungles and volcanoes in Costa Rica, which is part of what makes it so fun. Costa Rica also has some great beaches and some great beach resorts. For example, I could send you to an amazing beach resort in Costa Rica, but then you could do some excursions and go inland and see some of the other fun stuff that's there. On these beaches and in basically the water of Costa Rica, you can see sea turtles and other wildlife. It's just, Costa Rica is just such a fun combination of water and nature. It's a great spot to think about taking your extended family. Number seven, we are back to a U.S. destination, and we're talking about Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. Myrtle Beach is located right on the sunny South Carolina coast. It's a 60-mile stretch of pristine coastline. So they do sandcastle building. You can do beach combing and look for all kinds of shells and fun things to pick up along crab, watch for crabs and watch for, anyway, all of the fun beach types of things. You can splash in the waves. You can go boogie boarding. Very fun. There are amusement parks and games along the Myrtle Beach boardwalk. There's Ripley's Aquarium, and you can walk through a tunnel surrounded by this all this marine life and sharks and everything that are around you. 
the Carolina Opry is there and there are live shows which have like really talented performers with music and dance and comedy and things like that. So that that's a really fun thing to know about. And not only are there top-notch golf courses, of course, which most people have heard about golfing in the Myrtle Beach area, but with kids, there are some amazing mini golf courses. You can also mini golf with kids. There's state parks, there's amazing seafood restaurants, like really a fun, fun destination to go with your family to Myrtle Beach. Number eight is go to Rome, Italy. This city is brimming with history and culture and these iconic landmarks, like everybody knows how amazing Rome is, right? Visit the Colosseum and see where the gladiators once like battled it all out. And you can go to the Roman Forum, which is really the heart of ancient Rome. I would spend at least a full day at the Vatican City. Now, the Vatican City is incredible. They've got St. Peter's Basilica there, the Sistine Chapel there. So you get to see Michelangelo's works and Bernini's. Anyway, and all of the historical stuff and everything that is there at the Vatican City. While you're in Rome, you get to toss a coin into the Trevi Fountain. Definitely try gelato, which is, you know, of course, the iconic quintessential Roman treat. And... While you're there in Rome, just get to enjoy that, like these panoramic views of the charming piazzas and the street performers and go up the Spanish steps and get to see the views. And I mean, it's just, it's so amazing. And like I said earlier, when I was talking about London, just go to, rather than trying to go to all of Italy and see all of Italy with your kids and grandkids, like just pick. For example, one spot, Rome, would be such a fun place to go and just really soak up the whole, I guess, adventure of, of what Rome is and get to just enjoy it. Okay, we are now on to number nine. Number nine is Yellowstone National Park. Okay, if you have never been to Yellowstone, you have got to go. Yellowstone is called Nature's Playground in the Wild West. It's so amazing. It really is a must visit destination. So cool. There are geothermal wonders, diverse wildlife, awesome landscapes. Like it's, it's really fun. Of course, you should see the Old Faithful Geyser, which is a geyser that erupts. They know exactly how often it's going to erupt. That's why it's called Old Faithful. And if you stand around and wait at the right time, it will erupt into the sky and it is huge and it's amazing. Go visit Grand Prismatic Springs. The Grand Prismatic Springs are these incredible hot springs that over the years have gotten so colorful, like it's this rainbow of color with all the different minerals that are in the hot springs. So all around the edges are all of these colors. Mammoth Hot Springs is right there. There's just so many beautiful, like there's hiking trails all around. You can hike to these waterfalls and these amazing views. Um, and of course, we can't forget about the wildlife in Yellowstone. All over the place, you will probably see bison. Um, you will probably see elk all, all over. Really good chance you could see bears and you might even see a gray wolf. So there are, and of course, the birds, the eagles and the hawks and the birds that just live there. So, so much great wildlife there. It's just a really fun, fun national park to explore. You can go horseback riding and it's just like there and you can drive through it. Like it's a, it's a drivable park for sure. Cause it's so large that you just drive to the certain areas. And anyway, it's just, it's amazing. It's just a really incredible, fun place that would be super great to take your family. Now for number 10, this is last but not least, Hawaii. Say aloha to Hawaii. Of course, Hawaii is a perfect destination for multi-generational travel because it's got a little bit of everything. They've got these beautiful beaches and landscapes. They have this really incredible, fun Polynesian culture that's there. You can swim in these beautiful waters. You can build sand castles. Of course, there's all the beach stuff, but you also can go to a luau and get a taste of like the traditional food and see the traditional dances and performances. You can snorkel. With snorkeling, the last time I was in Hawaii, which 
is a really fun thing to do. We just rented it from a shop for several days. And so we just kept it for the time that we were there. And we would just go snorkel on random beaches. We would drive to them or we would snorkel by our hotel where we were staying. And it was just really fun. We saw tons and tons of sea turtles. Like it was amazing how many there were and they're just swimming around in the water. It was just so cool to see the sea turtles while we were snorkeling. Another, of course, wildlife opportunity in Hawaii is to go whale watching. Now, whale watching isn't all times of year. So you have to be kind of particular and careful what time of year you go whale watching. I wouldn't go, for example, in the middle of summer because that's not when the whales are coming through the area. But in the winter is the best time. And just let me know if you want to go to Hawaii and see the whales, let me know and I can hook you up. Another thing that is fun, if you're on Kauai, you can take a helicopter ride and see the Nepali coast. If you are on the big island, you can visit Volcanoes National Park. You can also see the black lava beaches. There is some black lava and black sand on Maui also, if you do like the road to Hana. Um, so there's just so many fun things. I have been to Hawaii multiple, multiple times, and there's just, it's such a great such a great location. And you can't forget, like if you're on Oahu in kind of the Honolulu area on Oahu, there is the, of course, all of the fun um, USS Arizona and Pearl Harbor and those types of things over on the North shore of Oahu is the Polynesian Cultural Center, which is super fun. Like there's just really some amazing things that you can do and see in Hawaii and you can do it with kids very, very easily. It's a great place to be. Another nice thing about Hawaii is they have not only hotels, but they also have condos and those types of areas. And so you can have everybody be in one kind of central main location. Like if you, if we put you in a condo, then you can just share that area and have the living space and everything. So Hawaii is a great place to go as a multi-generational type of trip. Okay. That was 10. We finished them all. A multi-gen vacation is a win-win. Grandparents and grandkids get to make memories together. They get to connect and really share some fun experiences. Parents win because they get an extra set of hands and another set of adults to get to interact with the kids. And all the adults get to enjoy some time without the kids. And so it's just, it's a fun, fun way to travel. So pack your bags, embrace the joy of travel. Let's start planning your next grand adventure with your grandkids or with your grand, with your parents and your children or however that looks. So thanks for being here and hopefully you enjoyed talking about our fun grandparent, grandkid type of adventures. And we'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I would invite you to like, share, or leave a review. Let's help grow our wellness travel community.